There's no signs to mark it, but this rather faceless building behind me is the global headquarters of the US bank Goldman Sachs. The sun's shining in Manhattan today, but it's a bit gloomy inside the big investment banks. Tougher regulation, difficult markets, and mixed level of client activity are taking their toll, especially on the all-important bond trading desks. Now, results this week at Goldman and rival Morgan Stanley showed a recovery from the first quarter, and they were better than analysts had expected. But there's no getting away from the fact these are hardly glory days for the industry. To put things in perspective, look at total revenues at Goldman for the first half. They're about a third lower than they were six years ago. In contrast, things are a bit brighter for Main Street banks. At Wells Fargo, revenues have held up better over the same period. But that 5% growth rate is hardly spectacular, and it shows how the models of Main Street lenders are also being challenged. Suddenly low interest rates are squeezing their interest margins. That's the gap between the income they get from borrowers and the cost of their funds. But as a benefit to low rates, they're providing relief to American consumers and the housing market's recovering. Unemployment is falling. Default rates are near record lows and borrower stresses have fallen steadily. Just look at this chart from JP Morgan Chase. It shows just how much mortgage delinquencies have come down. In response, retail banks have been ramping up lending. That's another big theme we've seen during this results season. Wells Fargo added $10 billion worth of loans in the first quarter. It's making a push into areas like mortgages and credit cards. And intriguingly, even Goldman's getting in on the act. It's seen as a bank for the rich and powerful, but it's recently begun targeting the so-called 99% with an online savings offering. You might not be seeing Goldman Sachs bank branches on the high street anytime soon, but Goldman's just months away from starting to lend to the masses. The address for that is gsbank.com. Alistair Gray, Financial Times, New York.